Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Minsk. Please take your seats. We begin Media Literacy Solutions Forum. So I'm very happy this event is happening in Minsk. I think five, ten, five, ten uh, years ago, it was impossible to imagine this topic. And that such event will be happening here. As yesterday, someone mentioned during the side event, Belarus is the capital of fakes and disinformation. And it's very symbolic that we are going to talk about fakes and disinformation today and here. Because manipulation, political disinformation was trendy and popular here before it became the global mainstream. Of course, it's a joke, but also it's true, partly true at least. Uh, I hope today we will talk not only about Belarus, but about the global problem of disinformation, of the information space distortion, and about the solutions, how different sectors, governments, activists, for-profits, educators can work together to solve this problem. Today's forum is the cross-sector forum, so we don't invite here only educators or only diplomats because we believe it's impossible to solve problem only by introducing additional lessons or classes in schools or having the project or program on TV. Only collaboration of people of different ages, different countries and different sectors of the society can bring value. And to launch, and actually an important thing about this forum, that this forum unified not only all the stakeholders in Belarus working in the area of media literacy, but also it unified a lot of uh, diplomatic missions. And not so many events where uh, we all work together. And I think that's, that's uh, another proof that the topic matters. And in order to kick off the forum and to announce the official launch, I'd like to invite the ambassador of the European Union to Belarus, Dirk Schubel. Please, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the invitation to this very important event. Uh, I have been in this country, or posted in this country, only for about six weeks, but I see already many known faces here, and uh, that gives me hope that we will work very closely together with you uh, to fight this phenomenon, but to work on this phenomenon, but also on many other subjects that are relevant for civil society and for Belarus as a, as a whole. Now, um, I think uh, you have chosen an extremely important topic uh, today. Uh, um, I think uh, there's hardly any more important topic these days than uh, to talk about the media and how we how we operate with the media, how we pass our information and, uh, and, uh, and to fight, of course, also disinformation. I've seen you have an enormously long list of speakers and quite impressive speakers. Uh, so I think you will have two fantastic uh, intensive days in which you will hopefully also come to some uh, good uh, solutions. And that's why I think it's very good that you factored in the word solution already in the title of your, of your conference. Um, which shows that you really want to, to make this very practical, uh, practical uh, conference and that this uh, will also have a practical impact for the future work of all of us. So, uh, to enhance Europe's position as a leader in digital economy and to build our single digital market, the European Union works, up, works to open up digital opportunities for people but also for business. Um, I understand that Belarus is uh, very also into the subject of digital industries and I actually look forward also to learning more about the Belarusian engineers' achievements in this, in this context. Now, the global advancement of information technology, I think we can really call unprecedented what happened over the last uh, few years. At the same time, we all recognize that opportunities have been and will continue to be used by some also for other goals, which are not the goals that we want to achieve. This information is not new, it's an age-old phenomenon, but uh, within the age of, in the digital age, this disinformation phenomenon has got kind of new wings and has started to, to fly even, even further. So, we understand disinformation as verifiably false or misleading information created, presented and disseminated for economic gain or to intentionally deceive the public. 
So to address uh, a, co a coordinated disinformation campaign, which is often deployed with political objectives coming from inside but also from outside the European Union, we, the EU institutions, but also our EU member states, have stepped up our efforts and continue to take very concrete action to fight this, this phenomenon. So we have structured and directed uh, our response in the following four directions. First, improved detection and analysis of disinformation. Second, coordinated action through a rapid alert system that enables swift information sharing between the EU member states and the EU institutions. Third, collaboration with online platforms and industry. At the initiative of the European Union, a self-regulatory code of practice on disinformation was developed and adopted by large online platforms, by leading social networks, by advertisers and by the whole advertising industry in the European Union. This code of practice aims at increasing transparency of political advertising and decreasing the amount of fake accounts and also uh, which are to be found on social media platforms. So, uh, and the fourth um, direction in which we are working is to raise awareness and to empower citizens, the field of work that will be in the center of attention in this very forum over the next uh, two days. Uh, in 2015, in, we, in view of uh, a massive disinformation campaign coming from certain uh, Russian state media, but not only, I should say, the EU set up an East Strategic Communication Task Force. We called it in our slang East Stratcom. And I'm sure that some of you have heard about this, this platform already. Just a second. Over the, over the years, the task force has detected over 6,500 cases of disinformation in 20 languages targeted mostly at the EU, at the US and at Ukraine. As of 2019, the task force monitoring capabilities allow a very close monitoring of disinformation in a number of EU and Eastern Partnership countries. I know that some of you have used the studies and reports of the Task Force East or even partnered with, with them in researching the technology and the techniques behind disinformation campaigns in uncovering disinformation attacks. I think it is also needless to say in this expert's audience here, another important asset in this regard is the European Center of Excellence for Countering Hybrid Threats, situated in Helsinki in Finland. And uh, this European Center of Excellence shares best practices and supports the activities of the Union, um, and, but also of NATO. NATO, as many of you will know, has its own asset, the Strategic Communication Center of Excellence, an important international partner in addressing disinformation and hybrid threats. So what are our lessons learned and what is the way forward? Uh, I think here we have experts from, I hear it, at minimum 15 countries, possibly more. Uh, there is no doubt that over the next two days the issues of public-private sector partnerships, uh, of responsive and responsible legislation, of high journalism standards, of citizen participation will be explored at length and in depth. The one point I do wish to make, however, is that to combat an adversary, or uh, people must know what they are fighting for, what they are looking to achieve. In the European Union, we seek to counter disinformation to ensure a healthy public debate, to enable citizens to make informed decisions, and to safeguard our democracy, including the integrity of our elections. A vision is an extremely important factor of success, and I would like to invite this forum to formulate a mission statement, perhaps, setting such a positive agenda as I, as I just uh, described. In principle, these are the main messages I wanted to pass. Um, I think um, uh, you have really all the expertise present here for this forum to make this uh, a wonderful event. I look very much forward to reading also about the outcome of your, of your discussions. And uh, I would like to once again thank you for having been invited uh, to address your Media Literacy Solutions Forum. And uh, the pronunciation is on solutions. And I would very much like to hear about the outcome and will be happy to support you also in your further activities here in Belarus in my capacity as Ambassador of the European Union. Thank you very much and I wish you a great event.
Thank you so much for this uh, context. Now I don't have a job because I was planning to give the general context of the problem later on, but now uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, uh, talked about this and uh, gave much better overview. Uh, and now I want to invite here the Deputy Head of UK uh, Mission to Belarus, Aliza Thumwood, uh, to give the introductory remarks. Please, welcome. Um, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy to be here today and I'm very pleased to be invited to say a few words at the beginning. Um, this is a, a really important event and it's been organized by some of the key stakeholders in media education in Belarus. Many of you, such as Press Club, are long-term partners, so I'm, I'm really happy to see your involvement in this event. We live in a world where everyone's subjected to an abundance of information and it's a crucial skill for us, especially for young people, to be able to discern the quality of information, whether we can trust it and whether it makes sense to share it with other people. The UK government is supporting a number of programs around the world helping to counter disinformation and propaganda. And for this event, we've supported the participation of Marina Dorosh from IREX Ukraine, who will be speaking later today. Marina is overseeing an interesting project in secondary schools called Learn to Discern, and I hope that some of the ideas that she shares with you will be useful for Belarus and for other countries participating. I'm also really pleased to see a number of Chevening alumni from, from Belarus and from around the world taking part in this event, and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for your participation. Um, you may have seen a few flyers for Chevening here today, um, and I just wanted to say a couple of words about that. Achievening uh, is the UK's flagship scholarship program, which offers young people from all over the world the opportunity to study for a master's degree in the UK. Um, if this is something that may be of interest to you, this is an excellent opportunity to speak to some of the Achievening alumni and find out a little bit more about what it involves. The application window for Achievening applications is currently open, but the deadline is looming. It closes on the 5th of November. Um, so just once again, thank you very much. I wish you luck and success for the next two days, and I hope it's a valuable experience for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much to the British Embassy in Minsk for supporting uh, Belarusian media, Belarusian NGOs. Um, I was always wondering how uh, much uh, the small embassy, like British Embassy in Minsk, can, uh, can, can, can do and especially in such a uh, tough, difficult, and limited environment. And now I want to invite here Sofia Strife. Uh, she is a co-chair of the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum. Please welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sofia Strive, and as you introduced, I'm the co-chair of the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum. I'm also the EU facilitator of Working Group 1. And for those who are not familiar with this forum from before, it's a, a forum which combines over 1,000 civil society organizations within the Eastern Partnership as well as the EU and works jointly uh, to cooperate on creating a uh, some kind of a, a stronger voice for civil society in different topics that are all related to democracy, human rights, and so on, where this is very relevant. So, first of all, I'm really happy that this kind of event takes place, um, since media literacy is key to have an informed uh, population who can both question news and read news with a critical eye, as well as... Um, question disinformation and I think in a sense when you ask yourself like what does that actually mean it's a way that we form the reality around us because based on what we receive in news and what we read online or offline we get a picture of what like the reality that we live in and without media solutions to how we uh, fight disinformation we might be living in a reality which is not uh, presented on a truth. So uh, that's just to put it from a very holistic approach. So since all of these capabilities are essential um, to build a strong and independent civil society, um, I think it's also vital to see that this is kind of the ground of how we can work towards um, a population who can uh, question different uh, decision makers, who can hold 
people accountable and who can be critical against information that is being presented. So that is the background to why I'm very uh, impressed and happy about the fact that this kind of event takes place. And uh, especially that it takes place in Minsk, actually. Not only because I'm a big fan of the city, I think it uh, has very beautiful neighborhoods and a nice vibe, but also that I think like this kind of forum, especially here, uh, can show, can mean uh, a lot for the civil society in Minsk, but also the population in Belarus in general. And from an even broader perspective, I think this forum can also lead the way uh, for the civil society in the Eastern Partnership region, as well as whole Europe. So this is important also beyond uh, Minsk. And when looking around in this room, I must also say that I'm very impressed about the diversity of participants. So we have like uh, people that are experts on media one way or another from representing the Eastern Partnership, representing EU, so it's a geographical diversity. But I'm also impressed by the diversity of perspectives here. We have young European ambassadors, we have diplomats, we have journalists and so on. So I think this is also amazing to be in a room with people who ha can share all those kind of different viewpoints and together combine them in a joint message to what is needed in order to find these kind of solutions uh, on media literacy. And I think this diversity also showcases the urgency to focus on this topic, because otherwise all of us wouldn't be interested to uh, fly in here or take time off to participate. So I think it also shows how important it is to focus on this and to work together in order to find like innovative solutions on this topic. So with that said, I hope and I also strongly believe that this forum will result in a lot of um, potential cooperation to have like innovative outcomes and also new and fresh ideas uh, for, to build on for the future. And that similar kind of events like this will take place uh, in the future, hopefully as some kind of tradition, because I think this is a very good initiative, so thank you for that. Um, and I think that this forum can also function as an inspiration for the civil society, as I said, not only in Belarus, but in uh, the whole EIP and in the EU as well. Um, so I'm really happy to have the possibility to be here, and I'm looking forward to follow the discussions and the different reflections that all of you have. Um, and I really think that this is a unique and very needed event. So thank you all for participating and for having me here. Thank you. Um, you know, there is a big problem um, uh, that, um, that make uh, collaboration between nations difficult. Language barriers. You all heard about this, right? And there is a simultaneous translation at this forum, so please, those who didn't get the special equipment, please do it now, because I understand that not everyone here speaks English, at least not yet. Uh, so please, uh, we have the great interpreter here. Kari Laska, возьмите перекладные пристосования. Те, кто не поспели отримать, наш форум перекладается синхронно с ангельской на русскую, с русской на ангельскую. Так само можете говорить по белорусскую, перекладчик разумеет белорусскую. А когда сказать, сделайте это сейчас. Few words. Um, I'm Franek Vecherka. I'm from Digital Communication Network. So idea behind Digital Communication Network was to build this cross-sector partnerships, collaborations. When we created our initiative, it's international NGO, we didn't think about media literacy only. But after a few years of... Um, activities of forums, events in Armenia, in uh, Budva, Montenegro, in South Africa, in Kenya, we realized that all the problems are connected and media literacy is uh, the problem brought enough to help to solve the most of them. And this is why we are here and this is why we see media literacy in a very broad way. It's not only about education or media uh, classes. It's more about understanding the changes, the rapid changes in the digital era. And um, today we will invite at this stage people from different countries, 
For now, we have uh, participants registered from more than 20 different countries. Uh, of course, the majority, majority is from Belarus, but um, uh, also we have people from Asia, we have people from India, from the United States. So this is the proof that the problem of disinformation is global. It's not only the problem of authoritarian states or the problem of the countries with the developing media infrastructures. So let's discuss today from local problems to the very, to the very global solutions. That's the only way how it works. Uh, later, I will give you some explanation on the schedule. But for now, I want to invite uh, the great friend of mine and great friend of yours, the person who created Press Club Belarus many years ago, and uh, whose help in organizing this forum was critical. Yulia Slutska, please welcome her at this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Franek. Thank you, Sebry. Thank you, Papiridnyi Ustupovci, for such a good context. I want to turn to you with the words of gratitude. For us, we are just honored that we managed to сегодня работать вот эти такие важные, такие уплывовые международные форумы у медиаписменности. Потому что тема медиаписменности актуальна во всем свете, и заходный свет не так отдал нас разумел, что живе у свете постправды. Але мы думаем, что мы белорусы живем у этом свете постправды уже шмат десятилетий. Мы живем у российской информационном поле. Ну, хуже и замовной просторы, якая одинная, якая русскомовная. Наше державное белорусское телебачение сдольно заполнять эфир белорусским национальным контентом меньше, чем за полову. А для сусветных гигантов, таких как Facebook, как Google, Беларуси, как краины, на вогол не иснуе. Это просто небеспечно сегодня у мире. И сегодня, мне сдается, не ведуете, поднимают меня мои сябры, мои партнеры, что у першиню за пошние 25 годов есть некая огульная повестка по межгромадянской супольностью и державой у миновито с пункту гледжения информационной безпеки краины. И перш за все это про медиаписменность, это за створение якостного национального медийного контента. Метовито тому нам сегодня так важно принимать вас у всех тут, у Минску, у Беларуси. Мы вельми удячны вам за то, что вы приехали к нам, как поделиться своими ведами, своим досвидом, своими лепшими практиками. Наша же задача на эти дни вас вельми уважливо слушать и попробовать осенсовать ваш досвид как соправды знайти решение, решение для Беларуси и решение для региона. Ну и особливо дякую нашим соорганизаторам, без которых мы не смогли бы створить этот форум, это ДСН, это Белорусская национальная платформа, программа Чивнинг британского амбассады. И всем нашим партнерам, не буду переличивать их шмат, и дякую им, вы можете их побачить всех на нашем пресс-воле. Дякую великий всем вам и нам доброй працы. Yes, uh, let's uh, welcome the whole organizing team here at the stage. So, uh, please, all the organizations who helped, Press Club Belarus, Digital Communication Network Belarus, uh, National Platform of the Eastern Partnership, Chivnin Kalamne Fund, please welcome, come here now. Please, let's, let's welcome them. Kalilaska, вся команда, подойдите на сцену. 
Вся команда организационная, DCN Беларусь, Чивнинг, Пресс-клуб, Калиласка, Миколай, Абодва Миколай. Подходите на сцену. Пока все собираются, я перелечу партнеров. While everyone is gathering, I will uh, name the partners. So first of all, big thanks to the all embassies, British Embassy in Belarus, Kingdom of the Netherlands, European uh, Union representation in Minsk, U.S. Embassy and State Department, Office of Educational and Cultural Affairs, USAD, uh, PACT, Forjo, European Endowment for Democracy, Eastern Partnership Civil Society Facility, Civil Society Forum, The Cafe 1387, Grodna Media Room, Belarusian Association of Journalists, Stanbridge School, Willink Hotel, Salatera, and also Symbol Buy for the production. So, uh, please, round of applause for our sponsors, supporters. <laughs> and now I want to ask Olga to tell a few words. So yesterday I called Olga the bad cop in our organizing team. Uh, because, you know, uh, you see these beautiful uh, lamps, lights on these columns. And we had the war about these lamps because they costed 100 bucks. And, you know, and was the discussion, should we have this posh thing on columns? And I was saying, yes, because it should be nice, cozy, sexy, because it's an event about the most important issue. And Olga was always saying, no, that's too much. We have to save money. <laughs> and also Alexei, too. And this is how difficult to work and organize events when you have so many stakeholders. And it's very good to have always people who count money. So Olga, you are the person number one. You are bad cop of our team. So on behalf of the bad cop, uh, and actually I hope uh, that despite of uh, all of the many stakeholders that do need some uh, uh, team spirit, uh, with uh, being a bad cop or a good cop, I think uh, the whole lot of stakeholders has done a perfect job of uh, making this happen. It's the very first uh, forum that unites so many stakeholders and the major ones who are involved in the media literacy, uh, not only across the country, but also across the region, as we see from all the many faces here, from all over, from Bosnia, Herzegovina, from India, from the States, uh, from Ukraine, from Azerbaijan, wherever you name it. And I'm very happy to represent the Chivnin Alumni Project Fund which is uh, one of the partners for uh, this conference and you can see uh, some infiltration of Chivnin uh, logos all over here but the are uh uh, the scholarship is not only about uh, studying, but also about uh, widening your horizon and providing the unique expertise. And this is what we try to get uh, here, not only with uh, the Chimnin Alumni Project Fund, but with all of the stakeholders. So it's indeed a very team spirit. And I would join Franek in saying that I would like to say thanks to all of the organizers and, of course, our lovely audience who have come all across the region to join us here for the next few days. And I hope that you would enjoy Minsk and Belarus. Thank you, Olga. Uh, and I would like to invite here uh, Andrei Bastonets, who represents Belarusian Association of Journalists and the uh, National Platform of the Eastern Partnership. Please, welcome. Добрый день. Хочу приветствовать всех вас, всех нас на этом действительно очень серьезном форуме. Открывая его, Франк Вечерка сказал, что еще 5-10 лет было невозможно представить его проведение в Минске. Я скажу больше, еще 15 лет назад было сложно представить в принципе проведение форума по медиаграмотности, поскольку именно вот медийная революция, можно сказать так, не побояться этого слова, которое произошло вот за эти 15 лет, очень серьезно изменила и технологии распространения информации, и потребление информации, и привело вот к разрастанию вот этого вот мира постправды. Действительно, мы, это не новое понятие дезинформация, фейковые новости, но технологии представили возможность широкого распространение их и дохождение до буквально каждого из граждан. И поэтому нет никакого удивления, что появляется большое количество инициатив, которые направлены на борьбу с фейковыми новостями. Но в последнее время с удивлением заметил, что эти инициативы начали появляться в тех организациях и странах, которые как раз таки и отмечены 
как распространители фейковых новостей. Вот, например, осенью проходило в Варшаве совещание по человеческому измерению, и там больше всего про фейков говорили представители российского государственного телевидения или российские дипломаты. Или сейчас на одном из белорусских телеканалов появилась программа, которая направлена на борьбу с фейковыми новостями, и в каждом выпуске этой программы я с радостью вижу те же самые фейки или некорректную подачу информации. Но вообще борьба с дезинформацией, с фейками – это лишь небольшая часть проблемы, вопрос медиаграмотности или медиакомпетенции, мне больше нравится. Второе определение этим, конечно, не исчерпывается. И вот я думаю, что все сегменты этого понятия, сегменты этого сектора, все направления, которые позволяют бороться и с распространением фейков, и с повышением, и повышать медиаграмотность, и повышать критическое отношение граждан к информации. Я думаю, в этом ключевое, ключевое значение это имеет. Вот это все мы можем обсудить в течение двух дней. И желаю всем нам хорошей работы. Спасибо. The, the last person between you and the conference official uh, events that will happen. Um, and I would like to greet you on behalf of the DCN Belarus. Uh, I, as well, the member, of, I'm the country facilitator for Eastern Partnership Society Forum. Uh, and what I want to start my story is that actually a few years ago we had a tech camp for Belarusians, which was organized by US State Department. And the story is the tech camp for Belarusians, where the civil society activists met tech guys and they tried to find solutions. It happened in Vilnius. And when I attended this tech camp, I was impressed because it was a lot of cool experts and as well a lot of cool activists there. And at the same time, it was so sad that this big event happening outside of the country. And now and today, I'm really honorable to greet you, all of you here, the great experts, inside of the country, inside of my country, and you're welcome in Minsk for, uh, for Media Literacy Solution Forum. As well, uh, one of the key things that I think is important, that we bring here different stakeholders who is dealing with media literacy. It's uh, journalists who have certain perspective on media literacy. It's activists and it's educators. And all of these stakeholders, they see the media literacy from different angles. And I think it's crucial to find common solutions for common problems. Because media literacy, it's not only a problem of journalists that fake news exist, or it's not only a problem for educators that kids not, don't know how to recognize the fake news. It's a common problem, and we're going to find the common solutions. Thank you. <laughs>